Hi, this is Brian White with the Pro Tools Corner for AudioMIDI.com, and today we are checking out the new Slate Digital Trigger plugin. Trigger is a real-time drum triggering or sound replacement solution that allows you to take your audio drum transients and swap them out or augment them with new samples. So to get an idea of what's going on here, let's take a listen to a before and after example using Trigger. These are the dry drums unprocessed. And these are the drums with the kick, snare, and tom running through trigger. So I'm going to run through a basic example of using the trigger plugin to replace kick, snare, and toms here in Pro Tools. Trigger also runs as a VST or audio unit plugin, so you can use it in almost any DAW. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the kick. I'm going to go ahead and solo that up. And on the first insert, I'm going to put RTAS, Other, and the mono to stereo instance of Trigger. Now I use the mono to stereo so I can take advantage of stereo samples, uh, especially in the room samples or the reverb process samples. I want to get that extra depth and width offered by a stereo sample. So what I see here on the left hand side is the instrument browser. That's where my samples are going to live. That's where I'm going to be able to use the preset samples that come with Trigger. There's some really, really great kick snares and toms from the Steven Slate Drums Platinum Collection. These are radio ready samples already processed with EQ and compression. They really just sit in the mix. You can just kind of double click and instantly your drum set comes alive. You can also use your own samples. There is a additional software that comes with Trigger that allows you to make sample libraries for Trigger and you can just use your basic wave and AIFF samples too, just browsing your hard drive. So I'm going to start by loading in a sample and then just playing back the track and adjusting my detail and sensitivity settings. So I'll load a preset. Now notice that preset gives me two sample slots filled with the never kick and the never kick in our G. That's going to be the room sample and this is going to be the dry sample. I can blend the level of each of those as well as the envelope. And I can go to another empty slot. I have up to six here, and I can load an additional drum. Let's say I want to load up an 808 to blend in real low here. And I'll adjust the tail of that to decay really quickly. And now I'll just go ahead and play back the track and adjusting the detail and the sensitivity until it starts triggering correctly. So I'm just going to visually use the indicators here as well as what's going on here in my edit window to set these settings. So generally what you want to do is set the detail or the threshold first and then go set the sensitivity afterwards. Generally you want to set the input so that you're seeing the transients of the loudest notes kicking up here at the top. Then you go in and set the detail as your sort of threshold and then bring the sensitivity up until you're getting all your triggers but you're not getting additional false triggers. Now you can also use the re-trigger time and the high pass filter to help better control false triggering. Retrigger time tells trigger to shut down for a certain number of milliseconds after it triggers a sample and the high pass filter is like an EQ that's used to clean up the input signal to avoid any weird modulation especially on deep kicks or deep toms. So once you've got that set up then you can go about blending the different levels here of the samples as well as blending the amount of mix between the sample and your original signal. So right now I'm 100% sample That's about half and half. And the original.
Now, one of the things that's going on behind the scenes in Trigger is this really amazing phase accurate alignment technology that actually uh, compares the waveform of the sample to the incoming audio and attempts to align that to be completely phase accurate. So if you've ever used other triggering software, you notice that sometimes it kind of will sound phasey or, or even weak or flammy when you're uh, adding additional samples, when you're blending the original with the sample. This isn't something that's going to happen with Trigger. It actually has the most impressive alignment system that I've heard to date in a drum triggering software. So for the snare track, I'm going to do something a little bit different than on the kick. Instead of placing Trigger directly on the snare's insert or on a duplicate of the snare, what I want to do is take advantage of this really cool feature in Trigger called leakage suppression that allows me to accurately trigger drums with a lot of bleed. In this case, the hi-hat is pretty loud and it's really close to the snare. Um, it's going to allow me to trigger that snare and all the subtleties and all those little grace notes without having to worry about false triggers from the bleed of the hi-hats, the toms, or the kick. Now, to set this up, it's a little bit tricky the first time you do it, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stereo aux track right underneath the snare. I'm going to set its input to a free bus. I'm going to use the stereo bus 1 and 2, so a bus that I'm not using for anything else. And then the drum that I want to trigger, I'm going to take a send, and I'm going to send that to the left side of the bus. So in this case, bus 1 would be the left side of bus 1 and 2. And I will set that to unity gain and set that to pre-fader so that the level or the volume of the snare is not going to affect this send. Now anything that I think is going to affect the snare in terms of bleed in triggering, what I'm going to do is add a send to the right bus, bus 2 in this case. And so I'll move that up to Unity, set that at pre-fader, and then I'll just Option or Alt on the PC, drag to the hi-hat and the tom here. I'm not going to put it on the overhead, that's usually a bad idea, but I'm definitely going to put it on the kick, the hi-hat, which is probably going to cause the most bleed, and then the tom drums. Now, what I'm going to do here on this aux track is here's where I'm going to insert the trigger plugin. Now, there's this little suppression thing right here, and I'm going to actually set that up to 100%. And the idea is that normally without the trigger plugin, all I'd have is an aux track with the snare fed into the left hand side and everything else fed into the right hand side. That's not very useful. Trigger is what's going to do all the work internally by knowing which one to use as the actual trigger and which sounds to reject. And it's actually going to compare the left and the right hand sides and that's how it's going to know what's bleed and what is not bleed. So, Here's how this works. I'm just going to rename this snare so I don't get confused. And I will load up a snare preset. Now with the suppression up at 100% here, I can actually lower the detail quite a bit and increase the sensitivity to really pick up some of those really sensitive snare hits like over here. Let's take a listen. So to sum it all up, Trigger is an extremely powerful and accurate real-time sample triggering plugin that includes the industry standard Steven Slate drum samples. It supports OS X and Windows platforms and will work on any host that supports RTAS, VST, or audio unit plugins. For my workflow, at the end of the day, it all really comes down to the sound quality, and Trigger really nails it. The samples stay accurately aligned to help me quickly add power and impact to my mixes with very little fuss. The included preset editor lets me quickly integrate my existing sample library as easily as using one of the included presets, and the MIDI I.O. capabilities are available to handle unique recording and mixing scenarios. You can find Trigger in the AudioMIDI.com online store, and be sure to check out a free demo at the Slate Digital website.